For October the 23rd, 2015, we talk about the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, the Canesville Files, and we ask you about your favorite and least favorite puzzles in non-puzzle games. Welcome to Level 125. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm Jella Prendes. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Sorry if I am in a, a, a kind of kind of a croaky voice. I'm going to talk about that during the uh, during the brief because I've got some cool stuff that's been happening this past week. But uh, yeah, how's everybody doing? Do we have any anecdotes over the past week or so? Well, I'm, I'm just. I... Oh, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to give a shout out to listener Michael Farmer, who sent me some cool postcards and other goodies like illustrations and stuff that he picked up at Dragon Con. Mm. They really brightened my day. He basically just sent me a bunch of postcards slowly but surely over like a week and then sent me like a little box with some stuff in it. So mm. that was really neato. So thanks so much, Farmer. That was cool. And thanks to all the other listeners, too, for saying hi and hand apps and stuff like that. It's always nice to hear. Nice. Yeah, I always forget what time of the year Dragon Con is. Well, that was actually like a little bit back, but I didn't get the ah. chance to uh, say something like on the last episode I was on. So mm, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, well, it, it looks it looks like there are all kinds of these little meetups happening. It feels like. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, anybody else? I'm just hunkering down for my first ever time traveling with a baby, which is uh, yeah. which is going to be interesting. Five time travel with coast babies. Coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is Luke at the at like a young enough age and small enough size where he has to ride on Jen's lap? Yes. So he's okay. he, and the good news is he flies free. Bad news is he's going to be on our laps for five hours, yeah. which is I don't know if it's going to make him or us more annoyed. We will find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, it's like having a, um, a a fanny pack that fights you. <laughs> <laughs> so my theory for babies crying on planes is that they don't know how to pop their ears, and that oh, yeah. like they get the terrible amount of pressure. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're packing dum dums to help with that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I got so you. fingers crossed. Yeah, no, you always I always feel bad because like I get annoyed when I hear babies cry, but not because I blame the baby or the parents, but because that is inherently one of the most distressing sounds. It is like evolutionarily the, the like mm-hmm. most distressing sound. And also, <laughs> millions of years have gone into making that the most distressing sound. <laughs> right. And also, um, if I'm being honest with myself, that's exactly the noise I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> so, not because I'm scared of flying, but because, you know, it's an incredibly uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Well, yeah, you'll have to let us know how that goes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll be bringing my Vita. Who knows if I'll actually get to use it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably not. Baby's first thing in Rampa, huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick title. <laughs> <laughs> last, last, last week's title was a callback, so we can't, uh, or the well, one of the previous titles was a callback, so we can't do it so soon. <laughs> oh. Hmm. We'll have to do a call for it instead. <laughs> yeah, we have to we have to establish something here and then in a year and a half um do it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, cool. Um we've got uh what's probably going to be a quick show because of life stuff here. Uh but uh, we're gonna hit all three of the regular segments here the brief, the multiplayer, and the grind. Um, starting with the brief. the brief, where we talk about things that are happening around us in the world of video games. Do you all mind if I give a quick recounting of uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo? Regale us. Yeah. So this is a really fun time, and it's something I look forward to every year. People who listen to, uh, to to the shows and listen to the network uh, know that we do. Uh, we have a booth presence there for Watch Out for Fireballs. We've done live shows uh, for the past several years. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it is like my yearly vacation. If, if a vacation is a place where you go to be around a bunch of people and also work, uh, <laughs> but, and also karaoke. Oh yes. Yes. We had, we had our small karaoke gathering on, on Friday, uh, got so drunk that I walked in on Saturday morning at nine o'clock, just not top 10 hungover, but pretty hungover. 
um <laughs> and then uh and then pretty much from uh from 9 a.m saturday saturday to uh to n- let's say 8 p.m sunday it was just straight up socializing and talking with fans and having people come up to us and ask questions about the uh about the you know about the show and tell us how much they like the shows which is really nice and i don't want to be like haha people like us but it is like this weird indicator of growth um just how many more people are returning and coming up and saying these things um th- than it was before and it's always wonderful to have people say that you make them happy mm-hmm. yeah but you uh, guys all make me happy yeah yeah I, I mean we don't say it enough but it's true yeah. Well, and then, too, so, I got a lot of messages from people who were like, oh, man, I wish I was at PRG. And I'm like, me too, dude. I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, We're all checking your updates. So, yeah, it's really awesome when you guys keep us informed. Yeah, we we, we, we were trying to, you know, and I, mm-hmm, I was I was mm-hmm. I was tweeting what I could and everything. Yeah, and... you were drunk tweeting from the karaoke. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. I was, I was tweet, tweeting pictures. I've got uh, I've got some, I, I, I almost did a Periscope, but I don't know what Periscope is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the show gets bigger and bigger every year and I can't encourage people enough. You know, I understand if you're not in a place, you know, where, where, where it's possible to come out, but like, man, just like, as this gets bigger, you know, we don't have any intention to really stop. Like, I can't, I can't encourage you enough to come out. Yeah, and like if there's enough listeners who are flying in, maybe that could be like, hey, everybody buddy up and stuff, you know, like maybe you can go in and, you know, get plan hotel rooms and stuff together with some of the people that, you know, the listeners chat among themselves, that kind of a yeah. thing. And now that we have the Slack as like a centralized place to do mm-hmm. that, too, that's that that's also something we can we can kind of help facilitate. But uh yeah, I don't know. That's that's really all that there is. Um, I can't speak too much to like the gaming news content of what was there. Like, it's just a whole bunch of uh, places selling retro games. I chickened out <laughs> on buying a one hundred and seventy dollar copy of Ruler Bros, and, it, and instead I bought uh, a fan translation card of Mother Three. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mm-hmm. can play that on my Game Boy Advance P in, in my bed. Um, and I also got a uh, a copy of Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. So those were my my uh, my, my acquisitions, along with a mm-hmm. super thoughtful gift from Riff uh, from the Video Games Hot Dog podcast. He brought me this uh, this this set of uh, playing cards that he made uh, that match the collectible cards from Deadly Premonition. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's kind of like yeah, that's that's the bomb. Yeah. This one of those things. It's just like. You know, put that on the broad market, you'd make a killing. <laughs> it's like it's it's one of six of a kind. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, and that's that's really really cool. Yeah, he was just uh, he he moved recently. I found it. I was like, you know, who'd really like this, and like he was totally right. It really made my weekend, uh, along with a bunch <laughs> of other stuff that made my weekend. But it was a very thank it was a, it was a very thoughtful gift, and I'm thankful for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you, everybody who came out. If you are a new listener uh, because you picked up some of our literature, uh, then welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, but uh, but otherwise, no, every- silly. This is the wrong one. You're bad at podcasts. How do you do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> this isn't this isn't watch out for fireballs. <laughs> it's it's grown into a network <laughs> presence because we have Brayton and Nick there. You know, like we're, oh yeah, okay. yeah. We're, we're we're not just handing out WAF stuff. We're handing out stuff for the entire network. Cool. Yeah. So that's really all I, all I have. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody and, and encourage everybody, like, start planning now for, like, next year's one. Because if you have the ability, we would love to see you. Yay! Good stuff. Yeah. Who wants to go next? I'll do mine as a quick hit. Okay. Uh, just that the uh, Valkyria Chronicles uh, has gotten a trademark filed for a new game. So it is titled uh, Valkyria of the Blue Revolution, okay. which uh, which piques my interest. So uh, not following the the previous, you know, one, two, three mm-hmm. uh, convention uh, uh, that we've seen before. But uh, there's a uh, similar name in uh, for the Gap, uh, game's Japanese title, which is Valkyria of the Battlefield. Okay. Uh, which I, I'm always intrigued by how, you know how that gets changed if, if this is indeed the same game if it's different then makes sense but um if this is indeed the same game mm. 
what you know what thinking goes behind this one should be Valkyrie of the Battlefield and this one should be Valkyrie of the Blue Re- Revolution. My favorite version of that actually is a uh, <laughs> Virtue's Last Reward when it came out in Japan. Its subtitle roughly translated to "Good People Die." <laughs> 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 but yeah, I don't, I don't, I, can, I don't I can understand that one changing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know why that would be in this case, like blue revolution. That makes, that makes it sound a little bit like a, like a cold war thing. Cause it wasn't Valkyria mm-hmm. Chronicles, the uh, kind of anime strategy RPG version of world war two or retelling. Yeah, very much so. Huh. Had, what? had that vibe with Is America abstract... blue in the cold war. I have no idea. I just know blue and red are sometimes in opposition to each other. <laughs> I was going to say, we sure as hell weren't red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huh. Well, yeah, I, I'm curious about that. I know that they had some uh, some big success when they released Valkyria Chronicles on Steam. Mm-hmm. And that that was just recently. Yeah. And there's another like there there was a headline thing for a Tales game on uh on Steam as well here recently. So I guess I guess that is one of the hot new places for JRPGs. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, go figure. It's I Steam just is getting more and more ubiquitous, and I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yep. I like it. I like it, and I also like that there's stuff like Gut Josh out there too. It's you know, yep. it is a good time to own a PC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Jala, how about you? Okay, well, you know that thing David was worried about regarding the Call of Duty Twitter campaign, tweeting stuff from the game as if it was real news? Yeah, that people would uh, War of the Worlds it? Yeah, like, um, so that's kind of like real news is actually, in fact, taking footage of video games and trying to use that in news stories to show stuff. That it doesn't make what? any sense. An Egyptian news agency used footage from the Russian-made game Apache Air Assault to show Russian dominance against ISIS in Syria. Now, all I, like I watched it because there is a YouTube video of like that that broadcast that's in in the article, and I'm sitting here watching it, and it's just like very obviously a video game, and they're speaking English in the game. So I'm just like, <laughs> what? How does this? I don't even get it. Like. How does this even fly How, to be on TV? Like, what the hell? And then for people to just, like, believe it? Just eat it up? Like, what? <laughs> and so, anyway, I just that just threw me for a loop. But because, you know, there was already that uh, mention of the Call of Duty Twitter campaign, and then this thing popped up, and I'm just like, okay. It's, it's nothing, nothing more to it than that. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> seriously what well, the fuck you know news news sites do use those crappy animatics from time to time oh those and, uh, uh those, so... those korean ones <laughs> or, or it might, it might <laughs> but, not no, be just korean like, but just like you know generic animatic of a helicopter oh, or yeah. generic animatic of and it's like you know clearly animated but it illustrates a point mm-hmm. so but just they pull were that just, they, just there was like but this was like lifting it right out of the game, like from some part of the game where they're doing, you know, like a an air raid or something. And I'm just like, what? No, just no. What? I don't even know. It was yeah. confusing. So I, that just threw me for enough of a loop and it called back to something else that was mentioned previously. That's all. Nothing yeah. exciting. That reminds me around the time that... Uh, um... Uh, Fallout 3 was coming out. I forget who it was, uh, but some some politician, either here or abroad, uh, that really narrows it down, um, <laughs> some politician uh, somewhere took the image of, I think it was the Capitol building, like, you know, blasted and dilapidated, either that or the White House, and used it as, like, if you don't vote our way, what could happen? Oh, God. Like no. that. Like, huh. Well, that's kind of shitty. <laughs> You will become a super mutant. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll regenerate in radiation, which is good because there's going to be a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is sounding pretty cool. It's a real tug of war of emotions there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all be ghouls. If you're lucky, you won't need a flashlight. <laughs> the glowing ones. Mm, Vote ten penny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Huh. Well, that is super goofy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ben, how about you? Uh, yeah. So the story I got is they uh, released a trailer for the game Adrift. And I think they previously had a trailer for it because I believe I saw one like a year ago or so at the Video Game Awards in Vegas. Okay. But um, 
they released a nine minute gameplay trailer of it and it basically looks like gravity the game and since i loved gravity i'm kind of excited about the game Mm. um you're basically floating around a broken up space station trying to get it somewhat operational so that you can get back to earth okay and so yeah it's straight up the premises of uh gravity but they they admit there are similarities in the idea but they started developing it before the movie came out so Hmm. they Hmm. feel confident that the narrative is distinct enough that it's not the same thing but we'll see yeah i can't (laughs) how do you think that meeting went when 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 gravity was announced you know first day after with the team developing adrift uh i don't know I imagine the first day after they saw the movie Gravity, they were probably like, yeah, that movie was cool. (laughs) (laughs) Huh. Yeah, that Deep Impact Armageddon effect is very strange. What do you mean? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, yeah, this uh, this was good. I've not heard of this developer before. Do we know? Uh, It was developed by somebody who worked for Microsoft, and I believe they quit and moved from Seattle to southern Los Angeles and Mm. then made this game. Yeah. It's just uh, it's not a studio that I've seen before. 310. Mm -hmm. I believe (laughs) this is their first game, I think. Oh. What um, the people who made Gone Home are making a game called, is it Tacoma? Is that right? Yes. It is also on a space station? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Albeit not quite so obliterated of a space station, at least in what they've shown. Yeah, it's it's at least um, uh, intact enough that you can see how the people who lived there lived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, if I remember the the original trailer for Adrift that was uh, came at the um, what are the video game awards called? The Spike the, uh, PGAs, I guess they're not the, the Spike anymore. But yeah, I think yeah, they're the just called the Game Awards now. Oh, okay. I think they changed the it awards, from the yeah. PGAs. Yeah. But I think that's where they debuted uh, Adrift, right? Perhaps I cannot. Remember. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think so. It, from from what I've seen, like there there is not much spaceship left in that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, if they make it like an Apollo thirteen thing, yeah. Oh, that could be really interesting. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. This looks really cool. I had not heard about it before. Mm-hmm. Neat. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer section where we interact with you, the listeners. Um, Jala, my understanding is you uh, came up with this week's question, so why don't you share it with the listeners? Okay, well, I'm going to read it the way Dennis wrote it because he posted it. It's ah. a co-op thing. <laughs> All right, so similar to stealth sections, many games feel the need to throw in puzzle sections to break up the action, often with mixed results. What are the best and worst puzzles from otherwise non-puzzle-centric games? Nice. Uh, so I'm going to lead in with Amanda, who writes in saying, Vagrant Stories block puzzles make it nigh unplayable and ruin an otherwise interesting game. Agree. Yeah, that's one I need to play. Um, really, you haven't played that? That's I, well. I'm serious. Okay. I haven't. I haven't played uh, Vagrant Story, which is crazy oh. because I love the uh, the Evil Lisa Lions games. Um, from the uh, you know a- anything that takes place in that world from Square, um, and I really enjoy the art style of that. See, here's the thing: whenever a JRPG comes up, it's immediately, "Hey, you guys have to do that for WAF." <laughs> <laughs> so like oh, no. I'm, yeah. I'm afraid if somebody sees me playing that on PSN they're going to get false ideas about her upcoming schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least that's what I'm going to blame it on. But you can, you can't <laughs> limit it that way. I, I like the idea that someone has friended you just because they want to see what you're playing for uh for future episodes. So they can kind of like yeah. stalk you about people, it. People probably already saw um the result of the stealth poll for Watch Out for Fireballs uh when I was testing it out today. So <laughs> what, what's the result? Uh, Thief Deadly Shadows. Yay! Yeah, nice. just narrowly beating out Blood Curse, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to play Blood Curse anyway because I really wanted to play that game. <laughs> that was the one I was pulling for. <laughs> Aww. So, yeah. Oh well. Uh, ben, what does Tanner say? Uh, Tanner says uh, Silent Hill's piano puzzle in the elementary school nearly broke me. Hmm. I honestly and, can't remember this puzzle off the top of my head. You know what's funny is that I, I just out of curiosity, I wanted to compare, and I Googled what the top 10 hardest puzzles in games are, mm-hmm. and that one came up as one of the top 10, and then even in mm-hmm. one of the top five. So, 
Huh. I want to say I want to say it involved some kind of poem about crows, and you had to extrapolate that to the keys on a piano um, to to get the right sequence of notes. But the interesting thing about Silent Hill is they have a puzzle difficulty, right? Not that early. Silent Hill one did not. However, two and three did. Oh, okay. I thought Silent Hill one did. What what was this puzzle called? Do you remember? Okay, so the idea is you're trying to get this medallion, and uh, mm. there's a puzzle. There, there, there. Sorry, there, yes, there's a puzzle to get it. There's a piano <laughs> um, that uh, um, is the input method to release this medallion. And instead of having sheet music, you have um, you have this poem that roughly coincides to the positioning of different keys, what their nearest neighbors are, and the relationship between white and black keys. Um, and there's a red herring that has to do with the fact that some keys have blood on them, whereas other ones uh, that look like they have a bloody fingerprint on them don't actually have a correlation. Hmm. So it, it becomes like a uh, you're trying to parse this poem and it's a little bit of a uh, like a logic thing. Like, OK, Jim, Jim is taller than Tammy, but shorter than Steve. Steve, it, like it's a little bit like that to where mm-hmm. it ultimately what comes did Steve out eat for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, th- this is only for the medallion, like on the second playthrough. No, no, that you're thinking of Silent Hill 2. This is like Silent Hill 1, um, where you're in the school trying to get into the clock tower. No, there's a second playthrough on Silent Hill 1, though, where you get the alien ending. Uh, that's actually, you just go to the... Uh, the sorry, wow, I'm getting super arcade with this. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, you, that's actually, uh, you just have to find the key inside of the uh, the doghouse, I think. Hmm. I thought there were more pieces you had to pick up to get the alien ending huh. like, throughout the first part of the game, but... I might be misremembering that. I, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that uh, hmm, hmm, somewhere hmm. there's a, a listener screaming <laughs> at their steering <laughs> wheel. <laughs> no, so yeah, there, there, there is more. You have to, uh, you have to use the, a channeling stone in certain places in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But there we go. I knew it had something to do with the doghouse. Huh. But yeah, that is, uh, that is indeed a pretty. Uh, uh, a, a pretty weird puzzle. Not as weird as... Uh, well, I'll save that for mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with... Uh, Je- uh, no, Dennis. Here's the order. What What does Roop say? Roop says, I liked the reassembly of the Xenomorph in Dead Space 3. Getting the pieces was annoying, but the assembly itself was integrated into the game quite good. I'm not familiar with this one. I haven't gotten to Dead Space 3. Neither am I. I've just played Dead Space 2. I actually stopped at two as well, so I am nobody ended up has any frame well. of reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're missing it. We're missing a good puzzle. Sorry, Rick. apparently. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to know if it's the same xenomorph from uh, Alien. <laughs> That's weird. I'm sure it's not, but <laughs> it's weird that they would use that same word when they so clearly kind of like crib from and riff off of that series. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Jalo, what does Franz say? Franz says. The giant, blind, three-tentacled puzzle boss in Half-Life is one of my favorite boss fights of all time. The plant-like design of the thing combined with the clanging of the beaks on the floor Mm -hmm. and the knowledge that a single touch can mean instant death make for a thrilling and terrifying timing-based puzzle. I've been reinstalling er, the game about once every year since its release just to get through that encounter again. Yeah, when you realize that uh, the, the, that it's blind but super sensitive with its hearing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is one of my favorite encounters in that game. Yay. Agreed. Um, and then let's see here. I'll pick up with Chase who says, Pokemon tends to litter gyms and plot relevant areas with puzzles. And every game had very high and very low points with red and blue having the lowest to my memory. The most infamous, thanks to Twitch Plays Pokemon, is the Silph Co. Floor, tuzzle, uh, floor Tile Puzzle. What's a tuzzle? Tuzzles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teletons. Meat, meat tuzzles. Um, <laughs> which sent you on the direction that the, uh, that the tile indicated. The teleportation pads in the Psychic Jam was also pretty brutal um yeah so i'm not so i can't quite remember the silf co uh puzzles but do you guys remember those boulder pushing puzzles yeah where it's really easy to screw yourself over by pushing it into a corner that you couldn't push it anymore yeah i mean (laughs) that's that's kind of just like a regular sokoban problem but yes you could screw yourself and also the fact that you had all the zubats and geodudes 
attacking you every turn like they just cranked up the encounter oh, so high. yeah so like no individual element of that was really bad um let's just say it the <laughs> the encounter rate is the worst part of that but uh but yeah those two working together made an otherwise easy puzzle terrible yeah, yeah. you definitely need to get the what is it the spray whatever to minimize the encounters oh yeah 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 the pokemon spray huh the, this bat shark repellent <laughs> Um, let's see here. Uh, Ben, what does David say? David says destiny's latest expansion has added a lot of hidden content. that requires some serious puzzle solving skills, finding hidden objects and interactions to unlock some hidden gear. Uh, best part is it's optional as none of it. Uh, none of the drops are required for anything. Just cool. Good gear. Uh, Dunce award goes to moving block puzzles and Pokemon. Annoying. <laughs> oh. Time consuming and random battles make it easy to lose your place. So, like we were saying, <laughs> <laughs> whoops, I jumped the gun. I didn't read ahead. I'm sorry. It's fine. Ah. Hand daps. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Ben, you're the one here who has the most experience with Destiny. Like, is that is is, is that stuff cool? Is, are, are we to believe this, uh, David, if that is his real name? <laughs> I don't I believe I don't, David. I played games with him. <laughs> I don't think they had a lot of puzzle stuff in the the base game, or at least oh, I didn't yeah. experience a whole lot with it. So I'm I haven't experienced that that part of it. So. Well, according to all the stuff I've been hearing, though, all the newest stuff they've been releasing is much different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see here, Dennis. What does Steven say? Steven says, my favorite puzzle in a non-puzzle game right now is actually from Metal Gear Solid Five. Obviously no spoilers, but it was another fun meta brain teaser the series does well involving your crew, making you scrutinize a part of their traits you may have only glanced over. At least I did. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys, do you, are you guys like immediately familiar with what he's talking about? I think I just got to this part this week. Yeah. So, yeah. It is a cool. very, it is a very cool puzzle that like, mm-hmm. nice. it's, it's not quite on the level of the, uh, look at, look at the back of the CD case kind of thing, but, um, it does take advantage of the complexity of the interface and the amount of information it throws at you to, uh, defy your ability to find a pattern. Very cool. Uh, as for worse, Stephen continues, it was in God of War 3. I think it was 3 anyway. As Kratos, you're making your way through some sort of temple, and you have to get past a gate that's too far from the lever you pull to simply run under it. To solve this, you must find a topless female servant and carry her over to the level l- lever. I don't remember exactly how the logistics worked, but you somehow shove her into the gears after pulling the lever, which stops the gate from closing. Mm. I've been called out for being overly sensitive about this, but even for a series that doesn't shy away from nudity and violence, this seemed a bit gratuitous to me. Sounds yeah, like God it. Of War <laughs> is, is not that great at their puzzles. Uh, not that great at a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's something. Like, just in terms of like, they had something in the in the uh, the original game, which is the only one of the series that I really played, aside from like a little bit of God of War three. Um, I think um, around the time that it came out, which was uh, like it presented you with this moral choice that isn't actually a choice, where there's a where there's a slave in a cage, and you have to push him into the maw of this monster in order to pass, and he's begging you to stop. But you're a you're you're a tough man who has to make hard choices. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's a uh, yeah that that one is is probably tame and, and and that's the problem right is that they they started with the first game trying to go so over the top uh and then they've just felt the need to up themselves or up yeah. the ante every every time uh they yeah. release a new game which yeah. which it has just gotten to the point of unfortunate yeah it's almost become a parody of itself but yeah yeah I, I, I will I will say that like it you know like there are narrative reasons for pushing the envelope you know so it's not like almost it's not like like GTA almost but like uh, yeah they do kind of it, it's a little bit gratuitous as the series goes on. It's I, I mean I, I'm not sure what you're referencing with narrative reason but the narrative reason I got for it was like I'm on a rampage. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just that's just it stays at that level for the entire game to keep him at as an <laughs> antihero. Yeah. Uh they know God of War Three did some really weird crap around him, like trying to rescue a substitute daughter figure in the end. Yeah, of the that game. part was weird. 
It's just, yeah. So, and for them to play so hard to the anti-hero thing for three games and then to randomly like wrap it back around was just, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. That's, that's why I think like the puzzles make sense in maybe like in game one and a little bit of game two, but yeah. It, if we spend, you know, if we, if we talk about everything that's wrong with, with God of War, we will be here all night. <laughs> uh <laughs> To, Moving to, right along, then. To, 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 to use the word that people hate, it is problematic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Um, let's see here. That was you, Dennis. So, Jala, what does Ollie say? Ollie says, I'll always have a soft spot for Resident Evil's, quote, puzzles. They were simple, but very effective. Did I suffer frustration a few times? Sure. I did walk around the whole mansion for hours trying to figure out where to put an emblem or a ruby, but that was part of the game's charm. I can forgive it for that. I could probably forgive Resident Evil anything, except the films. Ugh. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Whoa. We have what? I, I, I totally agree emerges. with that. I do not like the films. Okay, anyway. What I can't forgive is Castlevania II and the ridiculous Deborah Cliff puzzle. And I played it for the first time as an adult with many years of gaming experience, not as a child. It is ridiculous. Yep. Castlevania 2 is one of those things that I like that I cannot defend. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the Deborah Cliff puzzle? Um, there is no apparent way forward. You have to discern from some NPCs, some of which blatantly lie to you. Um, uh, <laughs> that you have to walk there and I believe hold down until a whirlwind appears and carries you away from the cliff. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. It's, that's like some braid get the stars level shit. Yeah. 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 Like, braid, by the way, is it, also on that list of the most difficult puzzles. But they're like one of the optional endings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, sure. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Quickly, Dennis, can you defend? So I've only ever seen Apocalypse, which I think is the third one. Um, can you defend the Resident Evil movies? I don't remember which one it was. I, and I believe we've talked about this on the show. I was watching it with David on a lark, uh, and it has just the most perfect one liner ever. Uh, they have like the, the, the mutant dogs coming after the, the Cerberus. The I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Coming after <laughs> the good guys and they like fight them off. And the final one, like, you know, they managed to knock down it's like scrabbling on the floor and the guy just puts a bullet. At, Bam. Stay. <laughs> David and I just looked at each other and just lost it. We're like, oh! No, if I were drunk, maybe. But... Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I made the, I made the was, mistake. That's like a drinking movie. Like, that. that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like just, I, I, it was one I of those things where, like, we were in a punchy mood anyway. We'd probably been drinking. We yeah. Were, you know, halfway paying attention. It just, it just came out of nowhere so perfectly for well, the moment that, uh, that it's, it's, it's etched in my memory. As yeah. a favorite moment from from movies in general. Well, yeah. you know, there are times when the movie is so bad that it just kind of wraps around being good in that terrible way. So maybe yeah. that particular moment was, you know, a shining spot of wrapping back around for you. I don't care. <laughs> I, I remember nothing about any of the rest of the movie. So yeah. I, I don't I don't care how so bad it's good the room is. Like you're not gonna watch that without a, without a friend. Like Dude, I saw a <laughs> showing of that last week and yeah. there there was Mark from the movie was at the showing. It, it was <laughs> great. Yeah. Huh. But mm-hmm. yeah, you're you're watching that with like with a group of people, like watching Resident Evil Apocalypse alone when you're like in yeah. late high school, it, like it's just sad enough that you're just gonna fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh. Um, let's see here. I will continue on with Sam Bear, who says the best puzzle in a non-puzzle game is clearly the reset the computer screen in X Men for Sega Genesis. It turned the hard uh, sorry, it used the hardware in a way that I didn't start seeing regularly until the Nintendo DS. If you haven't played the game, at the end of the penultimate level, you have to physically reset the Genesis in order to purge a computer virus from the danger room. The worst puzzle in every first, uh, sorry, the worst puzzle is every first person maze in an action game from the NES era. No one's oh. going to argue that Fester's Quest and Golgo 13 are great games, but they could have been better. Mm-hmm. They yeah. could have been better. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure somebody is going to jump out and defend uh, the Goonies too. I haven't played it enough mm-hmm. to, to hold a soft spot for it in my heart. However, Friday the 13th uh, managed that pretty well. Um, yeah. Yeah, it did. because the environments were pretty small and mm-hmm. Freddy could be around any corner. So you're always mm-hmm. kind of holding your breath. 
Yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun. Agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, along the way of that, like that, that, that DS thing, uh, nobody so far has mentioned the puzzles, like every, uh, sing game that's CING, the people who made uh, hotel dusk, that series. Uh, and also, um, oh my gosh, trace memory. And again, every game included a puzzle where you had to close the lid of the DS to do something to like transfer something from the top screen to the bottom screen or something like that. I think a Zelda huh. game did it too. Um, and uh, yes, I, I I understand a lot of people had trouble with those as well because it's asking you to think literally outside of the box that the game is being played on. And you're like, no, I can't do that thing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. well, I, I close this machine all the time. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, ben, what does Sean say? Uh, Sean says they're optional, but I found anything resembling a puzzle in the Dragon Age games to lack fun or provide motivation to complete them. Agreed. Most puzzles <laughs> in Dragon Age are just like walk and stand on the panels, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, I, I agree. I can't really remember too many puzzles aside from standing on panels. Uh, Dennis, what does Christopher say? Christopher says it barely qualifies as a puzzle, but I always loved looking out for traps in the action RPG risen in the caves and crypts. There was always some kind of death trap to have to figure out how to not set off. And some of the most fun to me are the secret exits in super Mario world and all the neat hidden stuff in the binding of Isaac. Yeah. All good stuff. I, I remember I I'm started playing um, Dungeons and Dragons online, um, and I, I you know I, I didn't stick with it obviously, but my character had a sense trap skill, mm -hmm. and just for the first area of the game, I hadn't realized yet that it just wasn't going to be that common, and was just walking you know every five steps using sense traps, <laughs> um, just terrified of what was going to be coming out of the walls at me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the, it was, it was not nearly as useful as I was hoping that it was. I'm, You're not in the tomb of horrors, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> was the practical use for that to like check doors and chests? Do you think? I think that was the intended use for it. And okay. I was just like, walls, walls, I will include in that. And <laughs> but like, also this puddle. And <laughs> all they have to do is put in one swinging blade trap for you to think that every step contains danger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, one time and I'm scarred for life. Yeah. Well, no, it's just like one time and anything is possible. Well, to yeah. be fair, in the DDO beginning sequence, they even have a whole section where it's like, wait, stand back, let the thief undo this trap, blah, 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 blah. So, like, they set you up to thinking that there's going to be traps all over. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. hmm. And uh, Jala, why don't you round us out with Noah's? Noah says, the Mr. Freeze fight from Arkham City stands out as both a great boss fight and a great puzzle. It's true to the character because, of course, this is how a scientist would fight. <laughs> Challenging because if you haven't mastered the takedown mechanics yet, you're in for a hard time, and it's fun. Yeah. No, I mean, that is uh, one of the best boss encounters in video games, an awesome puzzle that, like, forces you to... It's, it's like a, a midterm exam for the mechanics of the game, and it, and it is a Metal Gear-ass fight in a non-Metal Gear <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> It also, I think it, it does not feel out of place with the rest of the game, probably because it uses all the different mechanics so well. But I think, you know, a lot of times a puzzle boss will just feel completely out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one, as he points out, just kind of fits right in. You're like, of course, this this is exactly how it should be. It feels like a battle of wits. And like, you know, I mm -hmm. like a smart Batman. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that, Ben? Like, I know that you really enjoy that game. Uh, it was one of the highlights of the game because <laughs> other parts of the game were not as great. So yeah, I think the only thing that comes close is maybe Penguin. <laughs> uh, okay. That's more of like a stealth thing. Yeah. yeah, that's more fun for like Nolan North doing a non Nolan North non Nolan North voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, we got through those in record time, everybody. Um, Yahoo! <laughs> woo! Uh, we are a motivated crew tonight to move quickly. <laughs> yes, we are. I hope we didn't give anybody short shrift. Uh, who wants to volunteer uh, theirs first from our side? Jala, how about you? <laughs> Sorry, I made, I made a decision. Okay, I, I, I volunteer. I wanted to hear. Okay. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I asked you. She volunteers as tribute. Who, who wants to volunteer? <laughs> I wanted to volunteer, but I didn't want to volunteer myself. I volunteered you. That's fine. <laughs> I was going to volunteer anyway. So, 
Um, I would say the worst one that I can think of offhand that I I come across because I play this game with some level of regularity. Getting to the dungeon in Legend of Zelda, the original game, where uh-huh. you have to go up a certain number of screens over blah, 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 in a certain pattern to unlock oh. the dungeon. And there's like no fucking way that you can ever solve that except for buying it through a game guide and mm-hmm. looking it up, which is total BS. So yeah. like, like they don't give you any way to know how the hell to do that otherwise. Are, so, you, are you talking about the Forbidden Woods uh, or Mysterious mm-hmm. Woods stuff? Mm. Yeah, I, I I believe I believe that you are. That might I be the that, only. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's it's, there's it's one the... particular. Yeah, there's one particular dungeon where you have to be in, on a certain screen, yeah. go up like three times and over it, like whatever it is, it's some stupid combination. But there's like no way to know how to do that offhand. Yeah. So. Hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, best, I, the, I was. The... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was interested that uh, nobody said Psychomantis from the original Metal Gear. Oh solid so you know like that is a puzzle in itself because you mm-hmm. have to figure out what to do think outside the box to even get to really fight him so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i agree psycho manis is great and they've never been able to mimic that success since. <laughs> nope <laughs> huh um i'm gonna go ahead with mine just because it was brought up a little bit earlier i only have a negative example um but uh silent hill 3 uh the aforementioned uh puzzle difficulty slider there are some puzzles that it hits and there are some that it doesn't so any puzzle that is like a resident evil last puzzle where you have to find a uh where you have to find an item and mix it with another item in the world uh those are almost all like high school chemistry puzzles or like high school science puzzles were like, oh, there's a, <laughs> oh, they're, they're like there's something that you need to set on fire. So you have to uh, uh, make an oxygen rich environment for you. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to take a piece of liver and pour hydrogen on it, which will create oxygen in the reaction with the enzymes and uh, make an oxygen rich environment. <laughs> or there are these moths that are the, that are keeping you out of a uh, out of out of room. So you have to mix chlorine and bleach and then blow it in through a, like through a fan. But there are other puzzles. Uh, um, see, I like those goofy high school ones because you are a high school student in that game. So it's almost like the world is like matching your level of competency. However, on the hardest <laughs> difficulty level, there are two puzzles, one of which requires you to interpret a poem about disfiguring a face into a keypad combination where like <laughs> I for, first I gouged out your eyes, <laughs> like uh, uh, matches with one and three on the keypad like that. Which once you understand, that's what it's saying to you. And once you match it up with uh, that measure, that method of input kind of works, but uh, otherwise does not look at all like a combination. <laughs> and then there's one uh, that just provides you with a poem and a series of uh, Shakespeare anthologies. And you have to be aware of the contents within them. <laughs> um, and also the... Oh, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> the like 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 the like the various numbers that are involved uh that, that are involved in them so like uh one vengeful man spilled blood for two uh is a, is a, is a line in a couplet there which you have to match with hamlet um and two youth shed tears for three uh which is like romeo and juliet and it gets even more obscure from there <laughs> Um, yeah and that one that one i i will interrupt to say that that was also on that those lists that i found of uh like the hardest puzzles that that was on there the shakespeare puzzle (laughs) yep so you have to turn that into a four letter combination or sorry a a four number combination Hmm. oh my gosh (laughs) which i love the balls of so let's call that the best but i i i can't understand uh, just where they're coming from so let's call it the worst (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the best and the worst yep it's how i roll um dennis no, that how about would be you? oliver twist not not shakespeare <laughs> um, no that yeah, would actually for me... <laughs> oliver does no it'd be tale of two cities uh oh yes <laughs> sorry don't mean to um, don't mean to jump on your spot no no yeah the, you, you got it uh for me the the game it for a game that is incredibly good at making every encounter uh, like a mini puzzle. The one boss where they overtly were trying to be a puzzle, they really shat the bed, which is Dark Souls hmm. uh, and and the Bed of Chaos. <laughs> they shat the Bed of Chaos? Yeah, they shat the Bed of Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just, yeah, it, it, to this day, that one just confounds me. Which I think, isn't there something where that was kind of half-finished or they ran out of time on that or... 
all of I, Lost Isolith, like Demon Ruins into Lost Isolith, is uh, kind of unfinished content. Right. Yeah. And it's it's just a shame because again, they every character that you encounter in that game is like a mini puzzle, and it, it works really well. And it's like the one the one time that they tried, it just didn't work out. So yeah. Well, usually puzzles have to have some kind of uh, you know pattern, which this one doesn't. It's re- it's yeah. not so much a puzzle, and and it's more of just a oh, you have to do like a couple of these things and be lucky enough to uh, be lucky. Yeah. yeah, if you're gonna do a puzzle, yeah, luck cannot factor into it unless you can reset really, really quick, which you could not in in that game. Yep. Um, and then for the best, I'll actually I don't know when I turned into an Assassin's Creed apologist. Um, <laughs> puzzles in those games where you used your eagle vision to find like the portals oh yeah uh, into into like another you know dimension or whatever uh that just put these like random crazy seemingly meaningless sets of data up on the screen um were great and when you found them it you know it it was you, you were set for the next 45 minutes you could just sit there and try to puzzle this out <laughs> um but i i always love that I, you know I never, I never had to go to like a fac or anything like that to solve it. So I always had just enough to get me there. But like I said, it was, it was a good long while of, of thinking. And I, I would literally get out scrap paper and, yeah. and write things down. Um, and, and the answer just always felt like you went, oh, that's stupid. No, no, that's not it. Well, yeah. oh my God. Like it, it just always seemed like the least plausible and you're like i'm totally overthinking it i'm totally there's no way they would you know, hide it that way yeah and that would turn to be the way which they just i always i i that is the 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 puzzles that i look back and, and just felt the most empowered and satisfied like a badass when i when i yeah. actually figured it out those are great um they also kind of play into the conspiracy theory nature of the story too because they yes, uh, most of yes, them have exactly. like a historical basis and uh like they play into one of the cooler parts of the animus which is kind of a, a lame story conceit altogether i i think but the idea that mm-hmm. there's this previous patient uh who i forget who did the video for him but it's somebody i really like um, who has gone through this and simultaneously went insane, died, and was absorbed into the system to try and break it. And this is his <laughs> yeah. way of communicating to you. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. So again, I, will... I don't know when I became an Assassin's Creed apologist. I don't know if you're an apologist if you find this one cool thing about this game. <laughs> yeah, also, I like multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's fine. Like you're you, like you're you're talking about like two and two and uh, uh, brotherhood. Like those are great. Yeah. Those are legitimately the good, old good days games that I just never never graduated <laughs> from. Lucky me. <laughs> ben, cool. how about you? Uh, so I think I've mentioned this one before, but I think the best puzzles in the non puzzle game would go to Nice Old Republic, just because the 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 variety of different puzzles that they have, since they have like Prisoner's Dilemma there and like Towers of Hanoi and mm-hmm. all those like fun problems kind of inserted in there. Um, uh, I think another one, I don't know if like Deus Ex is hacking would be considered a puzzle or not, but I thought that that was a really great mini game. I don't know if it's a puzzle. Which, uh, uh, which Deus Ex are you talking about? The human revolution. Okay. Um, that might be more, might fall under more of a strategy game. I'm going to second the God of war sentiment of, uh, how a lot of times they'll stick puzzles where puzzles should not go. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll also double down on dragon age inquisition and say that, yeah, a lot of times they would have a puzzle there, but it, it was just completely out of place and like unwarranted. So it, if anything, it just broke up the, the game flow of the, of the game. So, yeah. which sucks mm-hmm. because you get the idea they were put there for pacing. Mm-hmm. like to pad stuff out not pad but like to to put a break between masha 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 yeah and like <laughs> the w- worst I, I guess you probably wouldn't consider this a puzzle but would be like find these four parts of a uh, sword hilt you know and it's like so oh, the no. puzzle is walking around the map and looting things so yep whoops yeah yeah it's just a fetch quest yeah yeah huh well yeah that is certainly a whole bunch of good and bad puzzles we just talked about <laughs> and mm-hmm. I would also say Shadow of the Colossus, but I'm pretty sure that's a puzzle game. So uh, I agree. <laughs> but mm-hmm. if it wasn't, those are really good puzzles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I also agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for writing in. Um, this was a good topic. So thank you, Jala. 
Um, yeah, if you are listening and you want to participate in these, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast in order to uh, th- uh, see these questions we post on Tuesday afternoons. And uh, yeah, we are looking forward to hearing from you. The grind. Now it is time for the grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past week or so. Uh, a period of time or so for some of us here on the show, Jala. Uh, Jala, <laughs> since you were not here last time, I'm going to ask you to go first. Hooray! Okay, well, I will go ahead and start out with my usual co-op mentions, all of which are Guild Wars 2 related this time. Mm -hmm. Um, Graham, Justin, Sam, Conrad, and I beat the Ghost Eater Path in the Ascalonian Catacombs Explorable Mode Dungeon. And then Graham, Sam, Conrad, and I buddied up with James Robinson, who recently started playing, and ran Graham and James through their first jumping puzzle in the Skylab of Metrica Province, and it drove them nuts. <laughs> um, Conrad then rewarded us by taking us to the Cerebro Room, which is an unfinished dungeon area that was abandoned but left in the level design. There's a bunch of these all throughout the game. And um, from there, I also uh, escorted Dennis here through the Shark's Maw jumping puzzle along with Sam. And then we joined James and fought the Fire Elemental area boss. Hmm. So... Uh, and then I also found one of the legendary llamas, thanks to Justin. So, oh, hey, nice. Yay, I got one of the llamas. I like, uh, for, for listeners, I like llamas a lot. <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> and so llamas are silly and funny, and there are llamas in this game, and there's only three of them. And you can get, like, an achievement for finding all of them. I found one of them. I've got to find <laughs> the others. How many are there? Three. Okay. So anyway. In a big-ass uh, game world. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's a fucking MMO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, other stuff I've been doing. I played some of King of Dragon Pass. I played mm. one time through. Uh, I picked it up on iOS after the WAF episode dropped. And um, when I first got it, I intended to just pick it up, play a little bit, and then move on. But instead, I just like played through until the Groban clan finally died. <laughs> or it was like beginning to starve and I saw that the end was nigh and then I just didn't have the heart to continue and it was it depressed me so much that I did not go back and play again. Oh yeah. Uh, and like I I just uh have not had the heart to go back and play it again. But uh it was fun for the the time I was playing it anyway. Yeah. But I will I will eventually go back sometime. Yeah, the second time <laughs> around is oh like you're going you're not going to make as many mistakes as you did. Yeah. Like, even if you choose a slightly different strategy, like, you're going to know uh, what lines of inquiry are worth pursuing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, too, some of the encounters will repeat, so you'll end up seeing some of the same stuff come up. Yeah, but some of it's random. Yeah. (laughs) So good. I I mean, so, so, I mean, aside from that kind of depressing end, how did, (laughs) how did the kind of, like, mechanical storytelling kind of strike you? Storytelling was fine. Um, at some point or other, of course, then it's just like there's so many things going on and I don't think I have enough time to actually think about what I'm doing unless I close this game for a little bit and then come back to it. But because I was playing all in one giant chunk, I don't think uh, I yeah. really, you know, I'm like, OK, I didn't I didn't stop in between there and consider, you know, I think I should know. I just, you know, was going and going and going until it finally yeah. just went. You're playing so. it on your phone or your or your tablet, right? Yeah, tablet. Yeah. If you're not playing this for a mildly popular retro video games podcast, I would encourage you not to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just that I was enjoying the game and yeah. I was like, well, I want to. Oh, but this other thing popped up and maybe I'll. But then this other thing happened. And then that's. What yeah, it, yeah, it does. It does it, lead you on. It is like one, mm-hmm. one more turn in a, in a yeah. very satisfying, like non Diablo kind of way. It's more more akin to like a sieve. Yeah, well, it's definitely a fun game, and I will go back to it eventually. Mm-hmm. It's just I haven't had the heart in the last week and a half because I kind of fell into a black hole. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Ben, I think you would really enjoy this game. Why do you say that? Uh, just because of your fondness for civilization. Okay. Yeah. I would encourage you to check it out. I believe it's available on Android. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And let's see. Another thing I played... I played a little bit more, not very much of, but a little bit more of Dark Souls. Hmm. I finally, finally replayed uh, a little bit of it because of my long absence. And I went in and I fought against the Capra Demon a couple of times. And like I kept on getting stuck between the dogs and the Capra Demon trying to get past him. 
And I got him to like half health at one point, And then I'm like, you know what? Rather than letting this raise my blood pressure and make me want to turn this off and not go back to this game because mm-hmm. I otherwise like it, I am going to go do other stuff for a while and then come back in a little bit after I've, you know, done some other stuff for a little bit and, yeah. and played something. So I went into Dark Root and I fought the big stupid fluffy butterfly thing <laughs> and and you know, wandered around a little bit and upgraded my my equipment a little bit and you know, like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I bought the uh crest so I can go into the forest. I have not mm-hmm. wandered into the forest yet. I have not yet had the time, but yeah. I will probably that- wander into the forest a little bit and, you know, schmooze around there and then go back to play fight copper just cuz I don't want to like make <laughs> that ruin my my day. <laughs> you made a smart decision um by going and exploring dark root because i be- you know I-, I firmly believe that is an area you're supposed to go first like the fact that they put an upgrade material right there and also give you the uh um give you the uh blacksmith along that path is yeah. uh kind of like oh yes this this is going to harden you like wherever you stop on the critical path you go over to this kind of optional place um and and pursue that uh did you find the bonfire next to the artorius gate that you that you unlocked the Artorius Gate. The, oh, the, the is that one the one that the I just got? Yeah. The oh, is that shiny, shiny magical gate in the middle of the forest yeah, is, yeah. is what that crest unlocks. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I didn't know where it, where it unlocked. I yeah. just bought it and turned off the game, and that's where I stopped. Yeah, yeah. I have that bonfire. I okay, need to cool. kindle it, but I it's it's there. Yeah, and... kindle it. That is a that is a worthwhile um, kind of shortcut to a pretty hard boss fight later gotcha. on in the game. Um, you you can go to it now, but you don't need to before you go to New Londo Ruins. Um, <laughs> oh, I already wandered around down there. You know that. Oh, like I, <laughs> I know, I know. But but I mean, before like before you real. fight the boss, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> uh, do, do you mind if I sherpa you a little bit? That's fine. Okay. Um, Capper demon strategy for that: take out the dogs as soon as you can, like right oh, when they I charge know. at you. Yeah, and, I, yeah I, and I, then, the problem uh, is that I got caught on them, yeah. and then you know and the dogs. The like I'm trying you. to roll past and get past them, and then they're just like, "Fuck your shit!" And no, you're not I'm supposed like, to get past them. You're you're supposed to let them yeah. come to you, take them out, and then go up the stairs. Okay, well then, yeah. you know, whenever I decide I'm going to go back that way, then I will just you know yeah. hack at them a little bit. But I also figured it wouldn't hurt to be like. You know, go wander around, level up my equipment, level up a yep. little bit because I am not playing a heavy hitter, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, so that way I can kill the dogs a little bit faster, maybe, yeah. and maybe, you know, do a little bit more damage. That wouldn't be a bad thing. So yeah. it's fine. Don't, don't be afraid to, uh, to rely on the Drake sword at that point either. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been Bonfire Side Chat. <laughs> <laughs> Level edition. Well, I, yeah, like I, I just wandered through and I, oh, I also bought all the magic I could from that dude that I saved from Lowerberg that showed up at Firelink. And he seems very oh, yeah. nice, which means he's probably going to die because everybody else is an asshat. <laughs> so I'm, I'm expecting him to die at any minute because he sounds too nice. Oh, Lowerberg. This is the guy who, uh, he's the apprentice to Logan. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. He seems too nice. He okay. looks too generic. He's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, all right. So the last thing I played was Canesville Files, which is an iOS game. It's a visual novel made by Inkle, the people behind Sorcery and 80 Days. Mm. But it was released by Penguin Group, which partnered with them. So like, if you look up Inkle, it's not going to be published under Inkle. It's under Penguin Group. It's um, using the Inkle engine, right? Yeah. And... Um, this is basically um, set up as an introduction to Kelly Armstrong's Canesville series of books by Peng- you know, published by Penguin. Mm-hmm. So um, the choices in the game at first really just kind of focus on order of information that you absorb and whether or not you gather additional data points. You know, like the the options at at the beginning part of the game are like you walk into a room to investigate, see something and a window pops up and ask you if you leave the room or look at the thing. And and that's like arbitrary and stupid. Like you came in to investigate the room. If you see something in the room, you're going to investigate it. Like you don't need to pop up a window for that. You know, (laughs) that's stupid, you know, but um, I kind of figured it was going to be like that because of, you know, the fact that it's a setup for a book series but later on in the game there actually are ways to die and ways to fail at what you're doing and, and it, it gets the, the choices have more impact as you progress through the game 
And the story itself is pretty interesting. And of course, it ends in a way that trails off, leaving you with a lot of unanswered questions, not about the main game's plot, but about the various elements and and characters and stuff that you are introduced to. So uh, that, of course, leads into the book series and everything. It's definitely Hmm. worth a play. Um, I don't generally read much fiction or in particular genre fiction. I tend a little bit more towards, you know, like nonfiction stuff or podcasts and things. Um, But I may possibly pick up an audiobook version of the first book in the series just to see how it goes because the game was fun. So, yep. Well, it it, it served its purpose, it sounds like. Yep. It's it's a murder mystery. Like uh, you play as a, a lady who used to be a cop. And uh, she has quit the force and become a PI and is, you know, has some connections with the force. And then, you know, she ends up getting a case that relates to somebody that she used to know. And, you know, it goes on from there. And, you know, there's there's different layers of things happening and it goes back through flashbacks, you know, of your life and then, you know, things that happened back in the day and then, you know, the present time and. It's pretty interesting. Does it make good use of the visuals? Like, I know 80 um, days. Actually, it actually has pretty nice visuals in it. So I would say definitely it does. Um, they actually have uh, nice graphics, which was surprising. I didn't really think they would. But they it it's it doesn't look out of place. Let's say it that way. Like, it, yeah. it looks on par with what you would find for a visual novel game on iOS. So, yeah. Well, it's cool to see an author like embracing this interactive mm-hmm. side of things, especially as like a primer uh, for yeah. a series. Yeah, and that's that's part of what uh, caught my attention was the fact that it is part of you know like an introduction to a series of you know like basically quasi. It, it looks like it's kind of quasi you know mystical yeah. uh, you know murder mystery detective type stuff, mm-hmm. and um, that's a genre that I can. I it's one of the genres that I'm all right with, like. It doesn't seem overly like there's vampires and werewolves everywhere kind of thing. So I'm, I'm cool with it because it, it's, you know, not not so far into the occult part that it turns out being kind of like Anita Blake vampire hunter or anything. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, I'll have to check this out. There's a bunch of cool stuff. I haven't paid too much attention to them since we did the uh, um, the storybooks or sorry, the uh game books story books the game books <laughs> episode watch out for fireballs but they released the third part of sorcery uh which yeah. i need to go in and uh dip into um and uh looking i'm surprised at their... you haven't i have i'm surprised you haven't played that cole i know right <laughs> <laughs> i just i didn't know that it was out like they didn't publicize it very well or i just wasn't paying attention uh you when know when it we... pinged on your phone <laughs> uh maybe <laughs> huh well, yeah, cool. well, this yeah, this one was uh, two ninety nine. I want to say, but yeah, it's worth it for that price. So yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Jala? Nope, that's it. Cool. Um, let's see here, Dennis or Ben, who wants to go? I can go. Mine, mine is quick and simple. Cool. So on a lark, I decided to try Twisted Metal because I hadn't played a good car combat game in a, in a wow. good long while. That's been a while. Yeah. Which version of Twisted Metal? The 2013 one? Yes, 2013 relaunch. PS3. Yeah. Yes, PS3, and and um, it was something. Mm. I, uh, I I did not play like multiplayer, which I I don't know if that was a mistake and if that's where the real zeitgeist of the game lies. Um, the single player was was functional. And it was it was fun for the amount that I played. I played all the way through the Sweet Tooth okay. campaign. So here's what we know: the game exists and it yes. works, <laughs> <laughs> which is you know it, it that's more worse. than you can say for some games. Okay. All right, it's more than you can say for Big Rig Off Road Adventure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, so you know, I I I played the Sweet Tooth uh, campaign, which is the first leg of the story campaign. Um, and, and there are three legs to it. I don't think I'll, I'll go any further. Um, the, the car combat is fun and it was just, it was just kind of, you know, something I hadn't, a type of game I hadn't played in a while and and that was refreshing. Uh, but the entire theme of that game is just everything is trying so hard to get you to say that's so metal. Uh, and, and it just, it almost gets, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) after a little bit. How how heavily are they leaning on Rob Zombie still? <laughs> um, the music is all Rob Zombesque. Right. I would say. 
and and certainly the the theming and and just the, the zeitgeist of the game is very much in line with that um you know you are you're an, an insane serial killer trying to hunt down his only escaped victim which happens to be his daughter um and is entering this road combat competition led by a demon with magical powers who will grant you any wish i'm sorry um, that demon's name is calypso calypso <laughs> while still at the same time going on a killing spree um and and just you know being a general horrible person and uh the one the one interesting they did and i I, i'm i'd be willing to bet that every story leg ends with uh with this kind of ending they did a real monkey's paw for him oh yeah that's a that that is a uh series standard ah okay there we go see this is my first experience with with this series so um so that that was the one little twist although i i saw it coming but i appreciated that it wasn't just you know I, i appreciated that they didn't end with the scene of uh, a, a girl getting dismembered. So yeah. Um, so so <laughs> That'd be nice. how did they? So, so what was his ironic ending? Because I doubt anybody is going to care if you spoil the ending no. of a minor plot in Twisted I, Metal. I don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> <laughs> man, that is um, ultimate so, license. Like fucking run with this one, Dennis. <laughs> right? yeah. So yeah, Sweet Tooth is a serial killer, and he's he's. You find out first that he's trying to hunt down. Uh, the one victim that's ever escaped, which you find out then is his daughter. And it was like, you know, when he went insane and started killing, he started with his family, but she got away. Um, and so he's, you know, he'll do anything. He'll enter this road race um, or this, I don't even know what to call it, this demolition derby of extreme proportions yeah. uh, to to find his daughter. And so he finally wins, wins the race and goes to Calypso and is like, take me to my daughter. And so he teleports him into a coffin. That's six feet underground that he's stuck in hmm. and his daughter committed suicide like 10 years ago and he just didn't know it. Well, I'm still sad. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it could have been worse. True. Um, and again, they, they tried. There was a twist. It wasn't yeah. just, you know, straight up. Yeah, yeah then I found Dennis. You killed her. <laughs> yeah. Dennis, been... Dennis, that's so hmm. met. That is. Uh... <laughs> I, that, that, that abuses the rules of is it metal? <laughs> <laughs> like I, th- I think that is it metal has to apply to stuff that is joyfully metal yeah <laughs> you know like 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 so cr- cr- chrome skeletons game, like... gallivanting on a sea of blood like <laughs> i think i think the you know like ridiculously weaponized cars is pretty joyfully metal mm-hmm. so like the, the gameplay is fine it's it's all it's the story stuff that they tried to mash in between the missions that that's weird well and i was it's going very to say extra, so the the yeah. cutscenes are all FMV, oh, which is awkward. Uh, and then every <laughs> intro to a, a level, and it's all skippable, so I could have just mashed X and solved my own problem. But it's <laughs> it is a series of like camera zooms through different areas of the level, and each zoom gets one line of dialogue. The only uh. problem is that each zoom is like a full five seconds, and so you get welcome to New York City. Dot dot dot. The dot, gates dot, dot. are open. The gate, yeah, and the <laughs> gates are open. Dot 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 dot. For slaughter. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Pick up your weapons. Where? Dot, yeah, it's it's yeah. And you're like, Come and on. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's get to the chase here. I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. Um, but yeah, so it was you know it scratched an itch that I had. Um, it was it was interesting just as a curiosity. Um. And uh, it made me listen to a lot more metal than I, I would have otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that they even bother with a story mode. What's the point? <laughs> it's like a holdover, uh, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's and it's like it's something you do. If, if you want to learn the game, you got to go somewhere. I know. Wait, I take that back because I started story mode and was just like, they'll start out with a tor- tutorial. So I won't really look at controls. Um, and then they didn't. There was no context. Yeah. And. <laughs> For anyone, it, it, maybe it feels natural to anyone who's familiar with Twisted Metal, but Twisted Metal has a weird-ass control scheme. It does. Square yeah. is the gas. Mm-hmm. Uh, circle is the brake. X is the handbrake. Um, the the firing, I couldn't figure out for the life of me. It was on your um, triggers, right? It was on, yeah, it was on on the triggers, but then the, the trigger triggers were like swap weapons, 
And then, yeah. but you could only swap if you had more than one type of weapon. And then the firing only worked some of the time because I didn't understand that I needed to swap to a weapon that I had. It was just awkward. That really, really awkward. scheme is so metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what? This actually reminds me. I actually played a little bit of Rocket League too, but it wasn't anything to really mention. I don't know what the hell I'm doing in that game. Uh, you, no, you should mention it as something that's better than Twisted Metal. <laughs> well, it is better than Twisted Metal. Does does anybody and I played else with here? listeners? <laughs> oh, that's cool. And, yeah, like with uh, Jonathan, Brian, Mikhail, and I, I don't know, probably some other people. I'm sorry if I forgot you. <laughs> does, does anybody else here have history with uh, with with the Twisted Metal franchise? I, I think I played the third one, maybe mm. the second one. Yeah. 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 Brief encounters. <laughs> <laughs> I played a, a modest amount of Twisted Metal, Twisted Metal Black, like split screen back in the day. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, which, which I could see being very, very fun. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I have very fond memories of like off brand car combat games with yeah. my brothers. So that's what kind of brought me back to it. But, um, your Jack's yeah. X and such. Yep. Jack X, uh, Crash. Bandicoot, uh, or sorry, excuse me, CTR. Um, <laughs> actually, the one really fun one was Muppet Racing. Oh, you're just that talking about me. carts, good kart racing games now. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess it is kart racers. Uh, but we we play kart combat games as well. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was it was good times. So this reminded yeah. me of that. It was kind of laughably over the top, and uh, and yeah, yeah. scratch that itch. At least you didn't pay money for it directly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You slid some money across the table, and you were now responsible for what came back across that table. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, it, it's one of those things. It, it, I I I don't even I can't even really be mad about it. Just <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I, I like about PlayStation Plus, which is I got yeah. an experience that I never would have gotten otherwise. <laughs> like I never would have even I never would have gone near the game. I you know have an interesting story to tell. I can laugh at at it you know on its own terms and 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 be done with it. Hmm. So five dollars a month for those those little um, delights we'll call them. Why not? Yeah, uh, this is fine. Makes sense to me. Got anything else in the hopper? Nah, that's that's literally it. Cool. Oh, I, I got the what lion's arching. What happened to Virtue's first. last reward? Oh, Danganronpa. I'm I'm playing it. I, I will probably I will I will put in more time on this vacation. Okay, cool. And then after you're done with that, you're gonna steadily. I figure I figure the next time that's right for me to talk about it will win will be when I'm at the end of the game. Makes sense. Yeah. And, and, I've but, done the starting, I've done the midpoint, and and then we'll we'll do a, a final closeout. I, I think these lines of conversation are two two ships passing in the night. I think she also she's also asking if you intend to finish Virtue Slash Reward. Well, because you'd mentioned oh. it before that you were going to go you wanted to go back to it because of Danganronpa so yeah I gotta finish Danganronpa before I go back to it though yeah yeah yep yep well the good thing is you already have one of those in your possession so <laughs> yeah. but you like you have both of them so like there's no both, hurry yeah. yeah but then you have to pick up Danganronpa too yeah I know there's there's, <laughs> there's a lot of good games out there it's a good time I know right oh uh Ben how about you uh, I'm still going through Metal Gear Solid Five, and it, I'm coming to realize that it's a long game. Holy uh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how many hours do you have into it? I I don't know. I don't know if it tells you how many hours <laughs> you've played in it or not. But I mean, you know, uh, I know I've played it for over a month now. I think mm-hmm. so. Um, and you no, don't dilly dally. No, I, you know, I committed like a good day and a half to it over the weekend um, uh, upon recommendation from one of the listeners, Stephen, uh, Stephen V. I can't pronounce his last name. Villio, but, uh, I think. Stephen Villio. Um, he recommended that I pick up Quiet uh, and finish that mission from last week's conversation because she also can mark people on the battlefield. Yep. Um, you just have to ask her to, whereas D-Dog does it automatically. Yeah. Um, so I did that and I, uh, I had maxed out, uh, D dogs bond. Um, so I started working with quiet. I finished that mission and upon your advice, I dropped, uh, supplies on her, um, <laughs> to get the, uh, I, the stamina kill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've gotten to the point of the game that was referenced earlier where there's some sort of meta puzzle looking at your people. Um, so I've gotten to that point of the game. Yeah. Um, and that's that's pretty much right where I am. Um, I still think I'm a good maybe ten missions away from the end of the game proper. Um, 
just about yeah. yeah. Like you, with, with with that discovery, you have found out like what the main thrust of yes. uh, of that leg of the of the story is, which is hilarious. <laughs> it is the, just 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 you know, like like find and replace nano machines for X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the yeah the Bond plot twist is hilarious in this game. Yeah. So I I I laughed aloud when it was revealed. But like uh, they, they go places with it that make it make a tremendous amount of sense. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> at least to me. Like, and I'm I'm willing to suffer a great amount of bullshit in order to like get to those cool things. So everybody take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so far, I mean, uh, so quiet. Okay. But I think, yeah, the topic of conversation is like, so I, I read articles about this cause she's obviously like very sexualized as a character. And, uh, I read one article that was, uh, I think Kojima defending it and saying that there's like a character reveal that explains why she dresses the way she does. So I, I will try and hold out judgment for that. <sighs> well, um, even if there is a character reveal, it's, it was, and, and there is. Um, mm -hmm. It was also his decision to make that character such that she yeah. was as revealing as it was. So, yeah. like, he phrased it as you're going to feel bad for being judgmental because of you know, for for judging me because of X, Y, Z, her, her yeah. outfit and such. <laughs> and, and it's like well even if there's a reason like, you created it in the first place yeah. yeah yeah and like i'm generally like pro quiet <laughs> yeah so you know like if you want a booby lady that's fine put the booby lady just don't yeah. don't sit there and make some kind of overtures about it you put a booby lady it's fine yeah <laughs> <laughs> leave it, it, like, quiet where she is the, the the biggest problem is that she doesn't talk, and even that has narrative implications or nar narrative reasons behind it. But, like, man, you still had the ability to... <laughs> it's, it's all your choice. Like, you, you make up the rules for this world. So, yeah, so my initial thought of the character was that it was making fun of, like, uh, like most women characters and the fact that, like, they're overly sexualized, and they and this one literally says nothing the entire mm -hmm. game. So I thought that that was what the point of the character was, but I'm not exactly seeing that but she's also a hyper competent warrior woman who has very complicated motivations once you figure them out yeah like like there, there's there's plenty to like there and you know i it's again it's one of those things that i like but cannot recommend yeah i yeah i don't well, know well i i I had posted some fan art i believe of quiet from uh one of the people that i follow on divin art and uh, it was a really, really awesome thing. And then there, it, that like spawned this giant conversation about booby ladies. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. damn it, booby lady, but she's so cool, but booby lady. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Somebody, be, I mean, Bayonetta, like, I, I will yeah. also defend Bayonetta. Like, a character can be sexy without it being objectifying. Like, I, I believe that, but it's tough. It, it, it's, yeah. it, it's really tough. And like, I don't begrudge anybody there, you know. Uh, mixed feelings about that there's yeah. there's a level of awkwardness anytime it is a work of fiction because yeah. like you said at the end of the day uh it's it's someone else choosing this for a character yeah and it that's hard to just completely put out of your mind well it was actually a conversation that um i'd had some point with some of the listeners about it and i'm like you know i think a lot of the people in our community are are probably more bothered by booby ladies than i am like say for example with 999 i like lotus's design mm -hmm. i'm like oh she's a booby lady but she's also a belly dancy lady and mm -hmm. she has kids and my sister's a belly dancy lady who is you know now going to have her second kid so like you know okay that's fine you know, that's basically kind of like my sister, who's a computer networker. Yeah. And, you know, Lotus is a hacker. I can totally see my big sister here. Like, that's a real person. So I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that booby lady. It's yeah. cool. Like, I, it doesn't bother me. But, you know, like, it really bothers other people that, you know, she's hanging out. It's mm -hmm. like, well, people dress like that for whatever. It's, yeah. it's, sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it's it's a little much. But, yeah. you know, whatever. If you like quiet, great. If you don't like quiet, great. I don't know. I haven't played the game yet, so I don't know. Yeah, it's a uh, it, the only reason it gets uncomfortable for me in situations like this is because it explicitly is the creator's fetish material. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm using I'm using fetish in the in in, in an incorrect way here, but like yeah. what they particularly find find attractive, or mm -hmm. here's a world that I have complete control over. You know, can I weird science like make a 
you know, this the, the, this idealized version of a woman that I have complete control over. The creator of Bayonetta came out and said, yes, this is this is my fantasy woman, you know, who is like this sexy, ultra powerful librarian. And Kojima has returned to this torn stocking kind of look multiple times throughout the series. So it's obviously mm-hmm. something, the, you know, so that's where it gets weirder for me is that somebody is like making their own wet dream manifest. Well, yeah, at the same time, it's like at this point, you should kind of like anticipate that he's going to do that because that's yeah. that's a thing that he does. And, you know, like everybody's got their quirks and mm-hmm. their faults and their good <laughs> points and maybe his one of his faults or or quirks or good points depending upon who you are and your opinion of it mm-hmm. like oh maybe yeah, yeah all of these kinds it's of things and it's, true. it's okay whatever yeah yeah and it's also probably my own hang-ups i don't like i don't like somebody trying to evoke boners from a video game yeah uh, well i mean like i rolled my eyes when i was playing snake eater and i'm just like really okay whatever you know yeah. <laughs> just so, it's like okay but i can also appreciate something that is meant to be aesthetically pleasing on yeah. some kind of level and be like okay yeah that is a cool stylistic decision and that just kind of plays into the overall thing i'm sorry mm-hmm. we hijacked your topic <laughs> no, 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 it's good. back to ben in the actual game <laughs> I mean, the the thing I liked about Snake Eater is even though they had similar things where it's like, you know, you press R1 to look at her chest or something like that, <laughs> you know, like, like, at least it was tied to the narrative of the story where it's like, you know, because part of the story is Snake, you know, falling in love with that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It says something about Snake. It also says something about Kojima. Like, the camera is Kojima in these games. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, what's well, like like where it gets dicey with Metal Gear Solid Five is that you don't really have a lot of control over the camera. You can do those zooms, but it is not like press R one to see what your character is paying attention to. Mm-hmm. It is more like here is the camera moving around, and you can what zoom in. What do you in. want to pay attention to? Yeah, <laughs> or what does you know what what does the director want to pay attention to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, like once I play it, then I can yeah. have a, a real opinion on it. I was just kind of like throwing out a general statement about it. Yeah. I don't want all, I don't want all booby ladies to disappear from video games because I oh, no, we need booby ladies. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's I have no it... problem with that. Just give me some naked men sometimes too. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's metal... what fighting games are for. <laughs> with Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> with Metal Gear Solid, you have no shortage of man ass. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, I know that. Like I played it's Ground great. Zeroes, and I'm like, <laughs> damn, check him out. Like that's their lead. Yeah. <laughs> Doctor uniform. Yeah, I mean they Patient have to put uniforms. a booby lady in there somewhere because all you're looking at is man ass all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, which like fairness, man. Well, which again conflicts with my other opinion, which is sex positivity. <laughs> which is like, you know what? Like let's let's have a bunch of man ass up here. Like awesome, great. Just like make it <laughs> make it equal opportunity asses abound. Like, <laughs> asses for all. Metal Gear equal opportunity asses. <laughs> <laughs> oh cool yeah so you're uh not pretty close to the end but you're most of the way through chapter one i'm gonna okay. be uh i'm gonna be curious to hear <laughs> what it, it sounds like i've made no progress when know, like that. That. <laughs> but to be fair chapter one is the game right? yeah it, it is yeah. All right. yeah yeah like chapter one is it, it, it is a full game yes so, um, but uh, there's there's still story. I think that if you're anything like me, you're going to want to see what uh, what comes into play for chapter two. All I'm going to say is um, just go through the main. You've already mentioned train wreck or something to that. I didn't effect. say tra- I didn't say uh, maybe I said train wreck. It's it, it is it is a mess. Um, yeah. It really it really is, um, and it is mostly filler. But like mm-hmm. the stuff that's not filler is good. Mm-hmm. I mean that meat that meatloaf ain't all sawdust. Okay. Okay. All right. You say meatloaf, and I think about the singer meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> Which just kind of brings it back to like the so metal, you know, bad out of hell kind of. <laughs> I, lo- I love that he's this operatic singer who just appropriates all of this metal imagery. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you got anything else, Ben? That is all I've been playing. Gotcha. Um, so I have basically nothing to give you a preview of what I've got in the hopper, like stuff that I've played, but I don't really have enough to say about, uh, just yet. Um, I've been playing through Undertale, um, and that is, uh, so far tremendous. I enjoy it a lot. It is a, uh, a JRPG 
style game, except uh, most of the defensive combat is done through these bullet hell ask dodge these projectile kind of things. Uh, but most most of the uh, battles can be won by talking. Um, so it very much is. I'm glad Dave is not here uh, because he would he would go off on this. But it very much is either violence or the good option. Um, but I don't have anything really more to say about it, so I will um, defer that until a later date. Lots of people are talking about that game, and I. The sad thing is, is that I'm like, I know I should play it now. I'm probably not going to play it until like way after everybody else is done being excited about it. Yeah, well, you're <laughs> not by go design. Th- just, just that's just how stuff pans out. You know, <laughs> you're going to go through a couple of cycles of, oh my gosh, this is the best, and mm, people, I, I hate this because people like it. And, oh, I like this because people hate me because I like it. Like, you're going to go through a couple of cycles of that. It is a popular indie game, and I'm pretty sure things will normalize by the end of the year when you have, like, you know, time off to play this. So Yeah, and that'll probably be when I play it, when everybody's, like, calming down. (laughs) Yeah, it seems neat. I like the aesthetic. I like the writing. It's all pretty cool. Uh, The other game, which I have have even less to say about, is uh, Danganronpa Another Story, uh, Oh gosh, what's the subtitle? Ultra Despair Girls, okay. uh, which, which is a game set in the Danganronpa universe that is a Resident Evil style third person shooter. Okay, yeah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> sounds cool. Okay. You shoot truth bullets. Uh, you have <laughs> one of the characters gives you a uh, a modified megaphone that the uh, the. This Institute for Hope has built to amplify truth words into uh, sublingual programming to short circuit Monokuma robots. Okay. And they went all out to get to that one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like you, need, you need the bus and the train. <laughs> it's not just a walk. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's anime as hell, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like nice. I'm, I'm all in on Dang and Rapa. Like I don't care how goofy it gets. Like the more the better. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, the real thing that I have to talk about, and I've only gotten like less than 24 hours to play with it, so uh, apologies if this is a little bit premature. Is uh, I got my Steam controller. Whee! Nice. Yeah. So this didn't arrive. Um, apparently they printed out the labels uh, uh, earlier than they shipped them. So my dates were all off. I ended up sitting out in the rain. Uh, for most of the weekend as I was away in Portland, but I got back um, and I started messing with it. And I'm not really sure where to start with this thing because it really seems to depend on the game. Um, Basically what they've done is develop the hardware and then handed all of the like, hey, make this controller stuff work stuff to the community down to the point where when you first load up a game that is not intended to be played with a game pad, uh, it says, hey, you should probably configure this. And there are community like top rated options um, to do this hmm. thing. Um, it's fucking huge is uh, <laughs> is how it feels. It's probably like 1.3 times the size of uh, the PS4 controller. Maybe just a smidge bigger than the Xbox One controller. <laughs> that's what I was going to joke about. It's like oh, still a tenth of the size of the Xbox One controller. <laughs> well, no, I mean, are you talking about the original Xbox or are you talking yeah, about yeah. the X? Yeah, the man hands. <laughs> yeah, no, the uh, oh gosh, what, <laughs> what do people call that? The uh, the chief. Mm. Now I can't remember what the uh, what the what the colloquial name was for it. Or how uh, about that big space saucer of a Dreamcast controller they had when they packaged that with knights? That oh. was. Uh, oh no, you're talking about the Saturn. I need to compare that. Yeah, no, that was mostly empty space. Like that was a big disc shaped hunk of empty plastic <laughs> that actually served its. Was rough... that Saturn? Okay. Yeah. 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 That uh, was. Okay. <laughs> I own that thing. I need to go uh, compare those sizes. This definitely feels more substantial, um, and there are a lot of niceties to it. However, like I haven't just in my cursory examination of games that I have installed for it. I have encountered something that feels like the Steam, you know, it, it, it was specifically, you know, accommodating of the Steam controller design. However, like one of the games that's coming up here for Watch Out for Fireballs is Thief Deadly Shadows. And I don't want to play that at my desk because I'm not an animal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, you know, I want to play that in, in, in my, in my re- recliner. However, you basically have to, nobody's created a uh, a scheme for that. So I have to go in and like cross check and double check and basically design the controls on the fly to make it work and this configurability is something that works greatly in its favor and also greatly to its detriment 
which I can see as this thing reaches the, you know, reaches the full market, like I'm still in the early release category or whatever, um, as people, you know, for kind of older or obscure games, um, start putting in their community things, giving you a starting point to like mess around with it, that, that, uh, that customization being a really good thing. However, it does feel like I'm doing an awful lot more work to make these games playable, um, in the format that I want to. Yeah. So, um, but like the biggest thing about them, um, is the touchpad kind of stuff. And I was skeptical about it, but also kind of excited. Like I was like, huh, this, this seems like a weird problem that they're trying to solve. I, I can't imagine, you know, the meetings that led to the design this thing ultimately got because it could either be really dumb or really effective. Mm hmm. I'm leaning towards really effective because the force feedback kind of makes this thing work kind of by default. If you're doing any cursor management or movement on the uh, right or left pad, um, the haptic feedback in it really kind of sells the illusion of it being a trackball. Um, a lot of the earlier reviews of this thing that I read said, Oh my gosh, it feels exactly like a trackball. Like it keeps on moving when you, when you lift your finger off of it and it stops when you press it back down. Like it's really impressive. Like how they managed to create that illusion. It doesn't feel just like a trackball. It feels like a pad that rumbles in a strategic way to give you feedback about what kind of like, you know, computation is being done about cursor position behind it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, however, it seems to work just fine. It really does feel like something you have to get used to is the biggest thing. And I've only had 24 hours into it. So I loaded up Dark Souls and I was like, you know, there's no real aiming that you have to do in this. But you can use this as your um, as <laughs> as your uh, kind of camera control. Right. And you can switch between like, is this a joystick? Is this a mouse? Is this a trackpad? Is this a scroll wheel? And all of those are very subtle differences for when I move my thumb across this pad, what does this thing ultimately do? And none of them really seem to feel just right. The closest was the trackball, actually, because it really just kind of like read that like mouse cursor movements. Anything that says like, hey, treat this thing like a joypad, you know, treat this right stick like a joypad felt either like way too sensitive and finicky or not sensitive and finicky enough to where mm -hmm. I had to swipe several times to do like a full rotation, which, you know, if you're on a console or if you're on a controller with a regular right stick, you just kind of hold left until you see what you need to do. I'm thinking about it more, and I'm not sure if that is a result of the controller and the operating system shortcomings. I'm not sure if that's a result of, I just need to go in and play with it more and mess with the settings, or I'm not sure if I just need to get used to it and it's not going to feel like a problem. That's a good question, sure. but you did prompt me by talking about Dark Souls to make me remember <laughs> that, you know, like, usually I'm control dumb and I don't, I don't remember controls at all. I don't retain information about that at all in my brain. Mm -hmm. But like when I went back to Dark Souls, I actually didn't have any problem whatsoever picking it back up again and, and playing and getting back into it. Mm -hmm. Although it was interesting because I was playing it differently. Yeah. The end. <laughs> continue talking about your controller no no and so, and so like like learning control schemes this is weird right because you're either getting what somebody else what somebody else thought was the best way to uh control this game and everybody mm -hmm. else voting and saying like hey yeah this is pretty good um or you're getting the uh and a few very rare cases now with this thing being out less than five days as of the time we're recording this um uh what, what the actual developer thinks is the best way to do it Mm -hmm. But like in some instances where I'm like designing a thief, uh, a thief three control scheme, like you're going in there and I'm kind of, you know, on, on one hand, I have a leg up because I'm making it. So I know that, like, I want my crouch to be um, not the left, like pressing the, you know, pressing the movement stick, but actually the lever button behind the controller, like not the triggers, but the one that your, uh, your pinky and your ring finger rest on. Like I want to mm -hmm. press that to crouch, right? Huh. Like that's something that's just right there. Uh, it's not mirrored to anything. You can like, you have total customizability behind it. And so I'll remember that because I know that, you know, I put it there because that's what felt best to me, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, there's all those kind of things, but ultimately this is a thing with, you know, 16 different physical inputs on the top of it, not counting, like, the various directions and, like, analog inputs around the uh, 
uh, the stick or the pads, you know, so it, it, it could end up being very complicated behind that. Yeah, see, for me, because I am so controlled dumb, that could either be a good thing or a terrible, terrible thing. You know, like, <laughs> that, could, that could be like a lot more trouble than I think it's worth for me personally, because I've already been playing a good chunk of these games on either a keyboard mouse or, you know, on my gamepad that I already have. You know, but at the same time, if I could make them a little bit more intuitive, then perhaps that would make it easier for me to remember the controls. Yeah. Eh, it is. That's <laughs> the number one thing on my wish list, but it's probably not something I'm going to be picking up right away. So. I, I would definitely wait. I mean, I don't know if you have a choice right now, but like wait until the broad release um, mm -hmm. in November for like a lot of stuff. Like it could be the case that as I'm speaking about this, somebody is making a thief uh, control oh, yeah. scheme. Yeah. you know around this uh, i could probably make a name for myself if i if i just put my name on a bunch of you know these old games <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and their best uh, uh at the moment controller configurations um that's yeah. interesting thought someone someone then goes professional control scheme maker mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> i mean maybe like they give you like there's like dead zone control there's like secondary dead zone control there's what happens when you're all the way at the edge of the analog input like it gets super super granular granular in a very admirable way um i just wish there was a way to make kind of like broad uh changes also um not every game uh plays nice with steam uh big picture mode or the steam mm -hmm. overlay Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to quit out of Thief every time I want to make a change to the way the controller works. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's rough whenever that happens. Yeah, so it just happens to be unfortunate that that's the game I need to have beaten within a month that I have to do all that. But I'm also forcing it on myself by not playing with a mouse and keyboard like most people would. <laughs> like a normal person. Yeah. <sighs> Any other questions about the Steam controller? Because that is all I got. No, sounds cool. Awesome. Uh, do you all want to button it up? Buttons! The now it is time for us to call it quits for the night. This has been episode number 125, one and a quarter hundred of the level. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. If you came out to speak to me and uh, Nick and Gary and Brayton at the Portland Re Retro Games Expo, Expo, I really appreciate it. If you were not able to and you have the means, I really recommend going to it uh, next year because we definitely in, uh, intend to go. In terms of admin, you know the regular stuff. There's a new one that I've been hitting across all of the uh, all of the shows here, which is there is a wonderful iPhone podcast app called Overcast, which recently changed the way they recommend shows to people. Um, and they've pinned it to how many people recommend episodes of a certain show. For a while, Watch Out for Fireballs was up there on the list. It is not now, but I've seen it pop on and back off. It's really just down to how many people how many people go in and star certain episodes. So if you want other people to find this show, obviously you can do the iTunes ratings and reviews. We haven't gotten one of those for a while, so we'd love to see that. But also, this is a way to go through and just do a couple of swipes and help us climb them ladders. Yay! Yeah. Um, I think that might be about it. Is there anything I'm forgetting, everybody? Sounds right to me. Cool. Uh, so I have been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I have been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. I am always Dalachan. The end. <laughs> And sometimes <laughs> Merkelizer on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and until next time, or at least a second from now, listen around for the uh, for the title. All right. Does anybody have one they want to submit? I have a bunch. Okay. <laughs> Fanny pack that fights you. Tuzzles. <laughs> okay. Shat the bed of chaos. Okay. That's a good one. Rob Zombesk. <laughs> and I know this is not going to make it, but equal opportunity asses. Yeah, I've got that, a couple. That was fine. <laughs> yep, I've got a couple of those. I've got a, a, a bunch of those in there, actually. I, I also had what's a tuzzle <laughs> <laughs> with a question mark. Okay. Ben? I did not. I had a couple, but I did not write them down. Oh, I did okay. not have the foresight. All right. Well, now you've learned. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> Took me 125 episodes to figure it out. <laughs> All right. So I've got Baby's First Dang and Rampa, Meet Tuzzles, <laughs> They Shat the Bed of Chaos, Chaos, rather, uh, Rob Zombesk, Joyfully Metal, Equal Opportunity Asses, That Meatloaf Ain't All Sawdust, <laughs> and I took down yours, the fanny pack that fights you. <laughs> but that actually was not in the uh, that was not in the main episode, so we have to disqualify. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just realized. Oh, oh, yeah. I I like what's a tuzzle. <laughs> yeah, puzzles are funny. <laughs> Teletons, Teletons did not make it to a title. We should tuzzle it. <laughs> uh, ben, how do you feel? I like Shat the Bed of Chaos. So. Yeah, that's also pretty funny. So. I don't know. So I think that Shat and Asses might be problematic. Yeah, uh-huh. that's why I figured those weren't going to be yeah. in there. But it's fun to have in here as a list, and I'm going to drop these on the uh, on the Slack people and make them guess. <laughs> <laughs> they like that game. Yeah, 